Welcome to Tesla Info and today we're looking at release 2022.44.25.1 or slash 2. There's a bug fix release already out, also known as a holiday release. Plenty to get through here. So we're just calling up the release notes in our 2022 Model Y here in Europe. It has most of the points um, that we're going to cover. There are a few extras which we'll still cover later on. Uh, and a reminder, you can also see release notes in the mobile phone app. You just need to scroll to the bottom of the screen to call them up. There's quite a lot in this release, unlike the earlier 44.2 release, um, which we've previously covered. Um, and we'll actually recover some of the points in 44.2, um, as you may have skipped that release coming straight to this one. Okay, the first thing is Apple Music, which is a welcome addition. Um, it doesn't quite work the way a Tidal does, so you can't download to the car. Um, uh, and it can buffer a little bit, and there's no Dolby Atmos, which some people thought you would have. The next feature we can have a look at is the uh, fan speed. Uh, previously, the change in the fan speed in the car would actually override the temperature controls, apparently. Can't say I ever really noticed, but now you can independently control the fan speed in the car, um, and the HVAC will otherwise try and hit the target temperature that you've set. Next up, we're going to have a look at the automatic indicators. Um, you can now get the software to cancel the indicators when the car thinks you've completed a junction or a turning. Um, early reports say this is a bit hit and miss, certainly in Europe, um, for things like exiting a roundabout where you're not actually changing lane, you're just leaving a junction, it doesn't cancel. A new game has been added to the toy box. It's uh, Ma Yong or Ma Jong. Um, it's a game I actually quite like playing, uh, and it seems to be reasonably well, well implemented here. Uh, and useful to while away that time when you're supercharging. Okay, the next feature they've added is actually the ability to search your contacts. I have to say, we thought this was here before, and we need to go back and uh, look at our release notes. But now you can essentially search your contacts and uh, just type in some words, and it'll subfilter your results down. Um, if it wasn't there before, then it's certainly good to see now. You can also use a contacts address for the sat nav, um, something we've done a video on before, but quite a useful touch. Next, which is a big change uh, and a useful one, is moving the audio uh, display to the right hand side, in our case, left hand side in the US, underneath the car. Um, this now acts as a tiles as well, so you can see tire pressures and uh, trip information, um, which is a welcome return from something which was taken away in 2021. Um, this effectively replaces the bottom two levels you used to see underneath the map. Um, you have a very thin uh, play bar and you can also see your favourites. Uh, on the map side, you can also bring up the full screen option which we had before, um, just as it was before. When you've minimised the play bar, you just now get a little music icon um, underneath the picture of the car on the docking line, which enables you to bring it back up. Another visualization change is the sat nav. And again, this is a, a sort of a rearrangement of information on the screen. The top of the screen is now dedicated to information on your next junction and how far away that is. Um, and you have information about your journey at the bottom on the on the right hand side of the map uh, in terms of how far you have to go. You can pull down the top and that will show you more information about the trip, including a return trip value, which always used to be there, but seemed to have disappeared for a while. And you can also slide up the bottom panel and you can basically add your waypoints and, and the settings, which used to be at the top of the screen before. So it's just a bit of a reorganization. What is nice though, is everything seems to be larger, including map font, which makes things a lot more easier to read. Tesla are trying to be more informative. And one of the things they've now added is when you're supercharging, if your speed has been slowed down, it will offer you information why. So in this case, it's a message to say the battery is almost full, or in this case, it's the battery is too low. And this information is available both in the car and in the app. You might have to press the little eye icon to bring up the information. There's also the ability now with dog mode to be able to see the interior camera, um, which is the first time that's been available. Next one's pretty much a gimmick. Um, 
Rainbow Road, you can now set up so it always shows whenever you select autopilot. Um, we have to say this is probably something people want to turn off in the new year after they've had their fun. The next change is the change to sentry mode. This actually came out in 44.2. We're including it here because not everyone would have seen that in the 44.2 uh, release. Um, essentially, you can now change the clip length, but more importantly, you can now enable or disable the cameras as a trigger for sentry mode. Um, one thing to bear in mind, the default now is not to have the cameras activated. So if you're a big sentry mode user, remember to turn them back on. Another change we're going to very briefly touch on is the energy screen has changed in some countries. Most people will have had this in an earlier release. We're just mentioning it here very briefly for those that haven't. And there's a whole video on this if you're new to that area. OK, now for some Model S and Model X owners for 21 plus models. Uh, Bluetooth controllers are now a thing. It's a shame it's not available in the other cars, especially as the front USB ports have been limited. And Steam has also come to Model S and Model X, something that requires quite a lot of memory and stuff. So we don't think it's ever going to be on the lower spec cars. Uh, all cars should be getting Zoom, although we've seen very few reports of this actually been out in the wild. Um, and we imagine it will use the interior camera just like the dog mode. You can now also fart from your mobile phone if that's what you want to do. Um, you can annoy your neighbours to your heart's content. There's also ability to limit the unlock feature on your drive. Um, yeah, and then just because it's winter, we're just going to rem remind people of this symbol. This means you have limited regen. It's not strictly a feature of this release, but a lot of people in Europe will be experiencing limited regen right now. So we thought we'd just remind people why. The big noticeable omission is version 11 of the FSD beta and single stack FSD for everyone else. Um, this would be a really useful feature to get. It should help address the things like the parking sensors, which are no longer equipped. Uh, and it still might come, but um, we're less confident the closer we get to Christmas. Anyway, that's it for this release. Hope you've enjoyed. If you like our content, don't forget to follow uh, and subscribe. Thank you.